All right, so how are you all doing? We're set doing well now in today's video. Just summoned for the brand new Christmas Denifall. There's a little bit weird that we got both of them as kind of Christmas characters. I do hope the next one is, you know, un-Christmas related or even if it isn't Christmas related. Maybe get like an Easter one or something. But anyways, this is the team we're going to be using today. Usually when showing off a unit, you know, you'd usually use your Margaret Gotha and then the unit. I just feel like King, with King being out, probably a little bit better to use him. Gives us a little bit more of those, you know, a little bit more defensive capability than it would with the Margaret. But uh, if you guys don't know what the Liz does, her first card here inflicts shatter damage equal to 450% of attack on one enemy. The second card inflicts damage equal to 600% of attack on one enemy. The ultimate inflicts shatter damage equal to 630% of attack on one enemy. And the passive, although it won't be working in here, is a fairly good passive in what it's made for. When an ally uses a skill in time limit dungeon, deals additional damage to 40% of the enemy's HP, increased by a unique or buff. So this is mainly just for farming the SA dungeon. Usually trying to farm like the third stage can be pretty hard, especially for some of the newer players. That time limit can really stuff you over. Hopefully, you know, summoning pro can help with that. Would I recommend summoning on the banner though? The banner is a definite, definite hard skip, especially with what was just leaked today. I will get into that as we get into the video. I wouldn't, if you want to do your 30 gems just so you can get the second multi for the one gem, by all means, but I don't know, I wouldn't really recommend it. Only reason we aren't doing gear today is because unfortunately the Elizabeth sets do not work on Danifor Liz, so there's that. And jumping over to the closet here, don't have a whole bunch of costumes. I do think these are the only two weapons she's ever got. I could be wrong about that one. I never spent when she initially came out. But uh, yeah, this is the team we're using today. Hopefully we don't just get absolutely stomped. And let's jump right into it. Here we go. First opponent, a demon team. Is that the suicide? Yes. Okay, so he has got the suicide Hendrickson as well. Okay, could make for pretty interesting. For some reason, I really, really want to just turn one rank up down a full list and see if we can get the one tap on the assault line. I know this is like extremely unlikely and I'm being super, super wishful here. Just because if we do throw out those king cards, Meliodas is almost like guaranteed to survive and Hendrickson will revive him and give him the full alt gauge. So don't want that to happen. And just shy, I mean, pretty impressive to say the least. I feel like if we were to, if we were to have two silver cards there, we probably could have got it done. Just wondering if I do kill the Hendrickson, if I kill the Meliodas in the same attack, does he still... No, there's no way, right? I mean, hopefully we have this one in the bag. Definitely a real player as well. The loading time on this was absolutely awful. I'm still surprised that, like, you know, matches can have such bad loading time. I know, you know, people could just be in, like, super far away areas and whatnot. And I don't know, I do understand it entirely for the JP version. You're almost never connecting with someone in your region. Let's see, they're going for the... Yeah, going for the Petrifying King. They're definitely the smartest bet. Assault Melee got so much health back as well. Hmm. Because I don't really want to keep buffing him. I might go one, two, get the ultimate for Elizabeth there, or Liz, should I say. And then merge these two on Gotha. In Petrifying the King, they really, really stuff us over. Let's see, what is the, the ultimate Shadow Boost? And I do believe that is... Oh, Shadow, yeah, ignore resistance. Okay, so we can just completely nullify the fact that, you know, he does have the Assault Melee buffs from the Zeldris. I still didn't want to give him more just because that Amplify single target card would have done even more damage if we did so. Yeah, like he's got a pretty easy one tap on us here. King actually doing really well since he didn't have any resistance buffs on him. Obviously not going to be able to tank the single target card though. Okay, can Barn help bring this back? If we could get some Heart Crusher cards, that would be great. Okay. Hmm. First match not looking too hot. Does have the buff on Droll as well, so we can't even target Meliodas. For survivability's sake, I think going for the three-star gift card here might be best. Oh god, yeah. Not being able to use those King cards was unfortunate. If we had, I, if we had just got the one tap on Meliodas turn one, this match would have gone completely differently. Almost just like a guaranteed forfeit, in my opinion, depending on who he has in the back. But yeah, these Pumpkin Bomb cards really aren't helping us either. And it looks like he has another turn on the Taunt for Droll, so still not going to be able to get to that Meliodas. Chucking out the ult there. Surely we tank this, right? Surely the gift card helps us. No, never mind. Yeah, they're almost dead. Okay, with a Droll Ultimate here, that'll pretty much kill us. Hoping the whole video doesn't just go like this. I mean, I was surprised to say the least that we saw a Assault Meliodas team. But uh, what was the thing I was talking about at the beginning of the video? The leak, if you would. On the Twitter, I don't believe it's been put on YouTube yet, but on the Twitter for Grand Cross, 
What do I want to go for here? Do I want to just go for the full... I think I might just go for this to start us off. Gets us the most level gauge at least. On the Twitter of Grand Cross with... Not even the Grand Cross Twitter, I've just believed really other people have leaked it. If you guys have been keeping up with Grand Cross as well, they've done this little teaser where they basically uploaded like a 360p video. Basically, it's just like a five second clip and this weird orb comes up. No one really knew what it was. People were guessing it was the Mael as like the, you know, New Year's unit. However, we did have the leaks for the 3000 year Meliodas. So unless they're planning on doing like a dual fest banner, it's very unlikely. But with today's leak, basically releasing that we are going to be having a new type in Grand Frost being dark type. Extra 10% damage to... I could get this completely wrong, by the way. Extra 10% damage to all types, except dark type. And then increase allies damage if they're up against like a type disadvantage or if they're going type advantage. Something along those lines. It's like a real, real confusing one. I just don't feel like we can kill King here. I'm just going to go for it. Why not? The end of releasing a new dark type, and along with that, we are getting the Meliodas. Everyone originally thought it was going to be the, you know, Meliodas with like the big grape, uh, the green shirt on with the big breaker sword from like all of the flashbacks that he has with Liz. Turns out it's going to be the one from all of like the commandment flashbacks where he's wearing like the big white outfit. Still has the huge sword and whatnot, but I am honestly super, super excited to see him in play. Animations look absolutely sick, and I'm hoping he's just, just as busted as King. I'm honestly cannot wait to see what happens. I do believe the JP version gets her update in two days or so, or at least like the live stream and whatnot, and we'll like know what he does. So much potential for costumes and whatnot as well. It has been, honestly, since we've had a, like, the best Meliodas, since Lost Vein, like obviously the, oh, this is not looking too good. But yes, we have obviously had like really good Meliodas's in past, Assault Meliodas being one still didn't make like the meta like it was definitely meta but still didn't make like the best unit in the game cut which i'm hoping this melee just does in saying that we did only just have king release so definitely got some hard competition hey who knows he could just absolutely wipe the floor with king we just have to wait and see honestly and i'm really really hoping to do the fact that is new year's and most garch games do like to make a big deal out of their new year celebrations we get a whole bunch of new stuff hopefully some new pve content as well you guys know i like my pve content that two-star shield is getting absolutely one-tapped by Kyo there. There is absolutely no chance we survive this, is there? Yeah, that's all right. Zero is for two at the moment, so let's hope these next three can be all wins. Third opponent, please be a win. It is a full Archangel team. Okay. I feel like if there's any team we're going to win, this will probably be it. I do still really want to go for the turn one cards with Anna Liz. However, I think just going for the safer play and going for the rank up king, double king attack, is probably our best bet, just in case he has the dodge fruit, I don't want to go for the murder and just completely waste level three card. No dodge fruit. Yeah, King just does so much. Like that was the thing when using like the Margaret team as well. If you are like, you know, losing in a matchup, if you got the level three Breath of Bless says like, either you got it from getting the two rank ups or the extra Breath of Bless card, you merge them. If you got it from the two rank ups, you just had a level three Holy Blade card waiting there, which at the time just completely one tapped pretty much every team, except like barn teams, even though it's type, just like a type in advantage the barn team with the gift card is just so so insanely tanky and if they tank that turn especially if it's like a level three gift card they get 50 percent of their health back which is absolutely crazy let's see it does have the tarmiel link up the tarmiel stance up should i say no one that she can really go type advantage into let's see how much we can get done on you here i might go one actually if we could kill tarmiel with this king card that would probably be best case scenario just so we can see like the actual damage she's getting without like all of the reduction from the Tarmiel stance. It should kill Tom. No, okay, never mind. Damn, this Elizabeth is just too good. Not even, okay, just barely hitting five digits. Tarmiel still surviving there as well. Yeah, I mean, I know she's not a PvP unit. But last time we had a non-PvP unit, I believe. No, okay, it would have been, it would have most likely been Miguel, but who you know, non-PVP units go. We had Brownhard who just, who actually did insanely well in PVP. Miguel a little less so. Her showcase in PVP was also a little underwhelming. I also do have to do a, another showcase on her showing off the new Christmas skin, which my own mind, they did a good job of. That cutout as well is just gorgeous. I know I've been, you know, just talking about the, cut, the Christmas cutouts a whole lot as of recent. I don't know. I just can't get over how well done they are. 
throwing these cards off here, that pretty much wraps up this match. King just... King is just too good. And at the same time, he's not, like, overpowered to the point where he makes nothing else viable. And that's, like, the greatest part about him. What he's done to the meta is so goddamn good. And look at that. Denifal is absolutely clapping the full ult Margaret there. Unfortunately, no ult to show off. So hopefully he win these, one of these next two matches. Look at that. Liz even making people fall for it. She's just too good. But no, let me know if you guys are excited. And if you've checked out the Meliodas video, I might actually leave that in the link of this video. But let me just check it out. It is some pretty juicy content, to say the least. What do we want to go for here? I'd really like to get an easy forfeit, apparently. And yes, I'm going to do an extra match, just due to that one being cut, just, just a tad bit short. But hey, I mean, at the moment, we're two for two if you count that forfeit, so... Raider Halloween Slater. Surely that's the Halloween Slater, right? And he's not using the regular Slater. Okay, fairly interesting team here. I like I like all three of these units. These units are actually by far some of the funnest units I have in Grand Cross. One, two. I might just use a pumpkin bomb as well. I might actually use a pumpkin bomb first, just in case they're using evade food. That way we get like an extra down of this card. We can get the three star and hey, would you look at that? Actually ended up, you know, baiting the evasion food out for once, which barely ever happens to me. I'm almost always fall for it. Quite a lot of damage on the Terran Slater as well, which is perfect. Surely we get this Elizabeth card and we can just absolutely white pick. And we get another one as... There we go. Those are the resistance. Yeah, the shadow cards. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. What's he going to go for? Jack of Light. Actually, if he goes for the Jack of Light, we're not going to be able to rank up, which is going to be unfortunate. I can almost guarantee he's going to do that as well. If he could also attack the Denifall Elizabeth Slater, he'll also ignore us getting the shadow effect. I mean, although these teams aren't the greatest teams, these kind of like debuff lock teams... They are definitely fun, especially whilst we have like the, or whilst we had, I believe, I don't think it's still up, the, you know, no name locking rule, we can just use like two Slaters, three Gothams and all that. Definitely a fun team that I would definitely recommend trying out. Surely we can kill Gotha here, right? Surely. How much damage is King gonna do? Okay, damn, we definitely could've got Terry. I was just thinking just Koshi's type advantage against Gotha might be our best bet. Hey, I mean, 30,000, that's definitely a lot more impressive than what she was doing before. There we go. Absolutely wipes Gotha. She is just too good. I mean, you're not going to see her in PvP, and you're not going to see her in the front of any, like, time limit dungeon stuff, so... If you guys are still summoning, or thinking about summoning, definitely wouldn't recommend it. It's probably one of the worst decisions you can make, especially with the fact... Hey, I mean, the King Banner's still out. You could still summon and get more dupes for King. Let alone summon on this Dana for this Banner. None of the side units as well are really good. That was the thing about, like, the Christmas Awaken Lilia summons. The Banner was okay. Like, there were some fairly good picks in there. If you hadn't picked up, like, the Gold Wings of Lane, she's pretty good. That's all of the Summer characters as well, like the Summer Valenti and the Summer Easton are there. Who else? I do believe there was one more really good. They also had, like, the Wedding DM, which is another really good pick. Let's see here. We could actually kill this Terry, that would be perfect. I feel like he's actually going to get quite a bit of life still back from these counters, though. Oh yeah, he's, start, he's starting to rack up the damage from the passive stacking there. And there is absolutely no way we're killing the downfall is. Okay, we just have to pray and hope that we survive the ultimate. Terry's ultimate being probably top 5 in the game for PvP as well, I Oh yeah, there's no way Liz is surviving that either. I was really hoping it would be an ult off in this one, that was my plan. Let's see, I mean, King and, King and Gotha have the shield, so surely, right? Surely. I'm, I'm going to have to whip out the Terry again sometime soon. It's been a hot minute since I've used him. Stacking into the King. Not an awful lot of that. I definitely would have done that after the ultimate. I don't think this guy knows how the shield works. It's not like Elizabeth's shield where you get, like, the reduced damage and, like, don't get to use your skill effects if you don't. Okay. King and Gotha surviving there. Can I bring this back? Highly doubt it. Hmm. Surely if we buff... Surely if we buff King here, we can get a strong enough shield to survive us through the next turn. Honestly, this one might end up being a win. I just hope the counter damage from Terry doesn't just kill him before he gets the shield up. Chandler on 1 HP as well. Okay, yeah, no. We, we're looking pretty good here. I... Unless he doesn't forfeit here, this might get drawn out just a little bit longer, just because I don't feel as if though the King Ultimate will completely one-tap Terry. How much health is he looking at? Never mind, we got the forfeit. 
and let's see at final opponent a Margaret Eskinal team. I'm also thinking about getting the Eskinal Holy Relic as well. I was just in the process of actually doing the bird raid before recording this video. Let's see, I do want to keep the rank up for Denifal this, so I might go for this one here. The fact that he doesn't have any like Jack of Light card or anything now does also guarantee the fact that we can get that off, which is really, really nice. He could put the Breath of Bless up to kind of help him tank. He get the extra Eskinal card as well, so hopefully he doesn't. Oh, would you look at that as well? Be able to get both of the three star cards off in one turn. I mean, they do obviously have to break up, you know, releasing good and bad units. Realize, especially being a PvP game, units like this and Legends, they do release units a lot faster than more just like PvE based games, for example, like Dota Combat or Fate Grand Order. So, you know, they are going to have to obviously release bad units. I feel like this Elizabeth does a pretty good job of that. I feel like, like, you know, making more of the exclusive characters a little worse for wear definitely does a good job of that. You know, you're not making like a super good character, super exclusive and hard to get. It's kind of like what they do with like the top 100 characters. Damn, actually killing Gotha there. That was, that was not too bad. Granted, that was the stronger card as well. And getting Eskinor really low. Hey, if we could get like another Denifal Liz card and yeah, get the ultimate, that would be perfect way to wrap up the video. Pretty happy with the animations as well. Overall, like fairly mid unit, but I'm happy with that. This whole Christmas celebration combined with like the two and a half anniversary, they have done a fairly good job with it. And I feel like this is just going to continue on for the next two weeks with the whole New Year's celebration happening. Last year for New Year's, I do believe they just released like the three units and it wasn't too big of a celebration with the fact that, you know, they are giving us like a new type of unit being like the dark type. I do feel like they will do just, just a little bit more with this celebration. And see, we get Eskinal kind of that pretty much makes us good for surviving this next. I just don't want to do too much damage. And yeah, okay. And using the one card was pretty good there. Hey, we'll just have to wait and see though. It, everything, I mean, it is very unlikely that we don't get the Meliodas. We'll just have to see though. I do believe we are going to get the Margaret on the banner, Kusak on the banner, and I believe there was just one other unit. Margaret, I'm very happy for coming back out. I do only have a 3 6. And my Kusak is 4 6. So. By all means, if they want to give me dupes for those two characters, usually my luck on the Holy War first banners is extremely, extremely good. That that could very well change though. Chucking out the Liz Ultimate here, that should just wrap about the video. Hopefully she can at least one tap Margaret. Please? Yeah, unfortunately. That's right, let's just wrap up the video. There we go, and that just about does it for today's video. I mean, hey, I ended up winning four out of six of those matches. Obviously the first two were the losses, but I would say I'm pretty happy with those results. Granted, no, would not recommend trying this at home if you're using Denifal Liz. Please stick to the time limit dungeon. But I mean, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please hit the like button, subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And I'll see you guys for some more Grand Cross content.